The S&P 500 and Nasdaq rising to record highs on this inauguration day Wednesday just as earnings season revs up. For more on that, we're joined by Liz Miller, head of Summit Place Financial Advisors, coming to us from her new place in New York City. Welcome back, Liz. Thank you. Well, Liz, um, is it all about earnings today or are investors getting good vibes from this inauguration and this unusual uh, handover of power? You know, I, I think that we're definitely seeing some follow on strength from the good earnings news this morning, certainly driven by that Netflix announcement that we had. And then the inauguration is is actually very important. You know, we did see all the major indices sort of dipping around 11 o'clock going into it. And then it's coming out of that rather smooth transition, at least compared to what was expected. And, you know, those who were enthused by the messages of hope in the future, driving the major indices to new highs into the afternoon. Well, um, but wasn't all this supposed to have been priced in after uh, Biden was, you know, declared the winner? If you look at the S&P 500 since November 3rd, it's up roughly 13 um, percent. I think that what we saw priced in after the election was uh, some confidence in the overall makeup in Washington. Remember going into elections, there was that big question of what kind of House and Senate we would have, what kind of strength there would be. Uh, right after the election, part of that boost was on a feeling that we had you know, somewhat of a split government, even as the Georgia elections were still out there. So that was the first boost. When we got the news of the Georgia elections you know, in January, uh, while we do have a Democratic House, it's not as strong a Democratic House as there was some thought it might be. So to many investors, they still see a Congress that has the ability to be balanced. And investors really like that balanced look. Um, certainly the events of the last two weeks, though, brought more uncertainty. We could be surprised the market didn't react more strongly than it did while today we see that relief, we do see that sigh that there was some pent up stress. And Liz, there's a lot expected in the first 100 days. Among other things, uh, President Biden is expected to uh, take uh, action on um, rejoining, uh, having the U.S. rejoin, for example, the Paris Climate Treaty or rejoin the uh, World Health Organization, a mask mandate, uh, among other things, take action on immigration. Um, how do you see stocks faring in, say, uh, the first month or two of a Biden administration? I think that investors are going to be focusing first and foremost on the stimulus package that he has already been starting to talk about, already trying to sell around Washington, and how that unfolds. Not just the results of the package that gets passed, but what the process looks like is going to be key to how investors move forward. It gives that first look at how Washington will work, what kind of support is going to come out, what parts of Washington do we hear support from? We already saw Janet Yellen at her um, hearings talking about that support, giving um, her view that our economy really needs additional support and that this is the right move. So I think investors are really going to spend the next couple weeks watching that first stimulus package and how much gets passed and what it looks like. And Liz, uh, we mentioned early earnings season earlier. We had blowout earnings from some banks such as J.P. Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs. Uh, Netflix, as uh, you mentioned earlier, uh, blowout earnings last night and P&G uh, this morning. Um, what's your assessment in terms of earnings season? Is it shaping up to one such that it'll keep this momentum going in the stock market, given that stocks have run up already uh, so much over the past few months? You know, when we look at valuations in the stock market, we always talk about a P.E., right? So part of it is the price and part of it is the earnings. As we look at these future earnings, if the earnings come through, then the P part of it doesn't look as expensive as we we think at the moment. Um, we know that particularly parts of the economy that are reflected by public companies, you know, that's kind of that split in our U.S. economy. Um, those look pretty good. And uh, that's what we saw in the bank earnings today. Um, that's what we will see. We saw from Netflix, which gives us an early look at discretionary spending. Um, there's reason to believe that fourth quarter earnings will be OK. It's really going to be looking forward. OK, Liz, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks.
Well, thanks to uh, Liz Miller of Summit Place Financial Advisors. I'm Fred Katayama in New York. This is Reuters.